Okay, so in this video, I want to um, basically do, I want to discuss the article by Rudolf Carnap, published in 1950, also published in his work, Meaning and Necessity, Empiricism, Empiricism Semantics, and Ontology. So, um, I've written on the board here, but first I want to give a little context. Um, logic positivism following the Vienna Circle um, had this, this anti this anti metaphysical kind of thing going on, and uh, <clears throat> Basically, throughout logic positivism, the whole thing was to, um, I guess, to make sense data or observation the foundation of all of all of, of all of scientific knowledge. So we have people like Carnap in 1928 or something like that. He had the Alf, the 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 logische Aufbau der Welt. So that was the logical construction of the of the world, which the whole project of that was to. Um, basically make a distinct translation, as you can see here, between the, the language of, of sense data and, and, the, and the language of things. Um, this is pretty much in order to make a distinct foundation, or the best possible foundation, um, of, our, of, our, of our knowledge in sense data, or, um, ob or just basically observation. So, sense data, we have a black patch here, patch is the word by I use my more first off. A patch of a certain size, color, and shape, or feeling of smoothness, you know, or certain smells, or you know, other things like basically sensory info. Since I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Since we say if we are talking in this level, this little li linguistic framework, we're talking about this as as whiteness, smoothness, brownness, roughness, um, blackness, black patches, and um, certain sizes and shapes. Um, and, you know, if I'm, if I'm baking a pie, I can, I have the, um, you know, sensory info about that, but then the whole thing, the whole project of the logical positivism, you know, is to break down and talk about things, talk about things being whiteboard, wall, marker, um, break down, break, break down our, our talk of things into talk about sense data, so that's, that was the whole project. Um, that turned out to not work out very well, so, um, and the reason why would be because, um, we can't be that specific with these, we can't be, we can't, like, take, talk of things down to sense data that specifically, so we, it's not, at, it's not that easy, so, um, you know, as you know, we we, we proceeded into the, into the thirties. Um, you know, the after Carnap's Alfbau, the Car Carnap's Alfbau was to how was was the project of how to very specifically and down to a T translate things talk of things down to very specific talk of sense data. That was the whole project. Um, you know, as time proceeded on, you know, um, that wasn't. You know, we kind of they, they kind of sort of didn't really think that was as easy. And then, um, you know, Schlick in his in his foundation of knowledge, he had you know uh, following Neurath. Neurath kind of said that there isn't really that there that there isn't really a justificatory connection between these two. <clears throat> and he was a he was a coherent guest and talked about science or, and uh, science and scientific knowledge with. With, with respect to that, and I have a video about that. Um, Carnap's The Elimination of Metaphysics through the Logical an, an Analysis of Language had similar fr frameworks, but in a more, in, he was kind of more holding on to this whole translation thing. Um, in this one, in uh, 1950, he was kind of giving up on it. He was still holding on to it, but in, it just was becoming something else. And I have a video about uh, A.J. Ayer's article called Phenomenalism. Of 1947, through the 40s and towards the towards the later 40s, um, you know, it wasn't entirely thought that we could do this as well. And 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 Ayer had this concept concept of a cash value tra cash value translation, which wasn't as specific in the way of Carnap in in his 1928 Aufbau, but it was still a, tra a concept of translation. So. That's that's kind of context here. So we're in in uh, in um, 1950, 
And following Carnap, we're going to have some articles by people like W.V. Quine, who changed the scene and the whole positivism thing, positivism thing, you know, starting here and just following this year, kind of just becomes out of style. So, this is the article, and I'm, I'm going to go into the actual explanation of this now. Um, first of all, first of all what, he start, what he talks about is the empiricists, thus the, the, the logical positivists, and their nominalistic talk. They aren't nominalists. A nominalist is someone who doesn't who doesn't believe in properties, who doesn't who doesn't agree that properties are there. It's so it's a certain metaphysical argument. So, but they have kind of a nominalistic talk, but they are not nominalists. In fact, they don't condone talk of any kind about about properties or abstract uh, or abstract entities like like universals or Plato's forms, what have you. Um, so he's, he's talking about this, and, you know, is, and their issue with that. And before him, their, their, their issues, their, their issues. But then we come to it too, well, Carnap, you know, he's always had his, link, his stuff of linguistic frameworks. Um, a linguistic framework, what that is, is just a, a set of rules for ways of talking, um, a way to talk about certain things, having certain entities within their um, uh, way of talking. So we kind of like how these two are frameworks. This is the framework for talking about things in terms of, of or in talking about things in terms of sense, of sense data, and this having the world of things of it, and this is just rules of talking about things as things. Um, this here, which I'm going to get to, these two, where it's just like, basically you could create any any linguistic framework to talk about any thing you want to talk about. The language of, 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 of universals, even Plato's, Plato's, Plato, Plato's uh, linguistic framework of forms, trope, trope language, you know, you just can go on and on and on with different, different linguistic frameworks of talking about things in different ways. That's what this is. So, and... Basically, what he's saying here in this article is that you can have whatever whatever language you want to, you want to do. You can talk in whatever kind of ways you want to talk in, but you just have to have certain rules which govern your system. Okay, so third, internal and external questions. What is the internal question? That is questions about the about logical analysis or lo the logic of a system, uh, question about forms of expressions, um, linguistic, um, li 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 basically linguistic questions. What, what he says is that questions of a new kind within the framework, we call them inter in internal questions, and they are formulated with the help of new forms of expressions. Um, purely, purely, purely logical methods or by em empirical methods, depending on whether the framework is a logical or factual one. So an uh, internal question is question, questions about the rules and how the framework is itself working. External questions are, let's say we're having, we're going to assume the framework of, of universals and talk about, and talk about universals. Um, external question of that would be, do universals really factually, ontologically exist? Um, they are questions of the of, of the reality of the system as a whole, is what he says. Um, so we ha we are talking about do things really exist? Do sense data really exist? Or we could also have um, no. I'll explain. I'll put an A and S here in a minute. Phenomenal language which is like the, the phenomenalism of A, or if you will. Um, so, do universals exist? Do forms exist? So, metaphysical doctrine is what external questions are. So, you know, we have the question as to these external things. Do 
these things really mes metaphysically exist. And Carnap says that we're not going to ask those kinds of questions. We're just going to ask these kind of questions and not these. And just because we assume a linguistic framework, thus a set of rules for, way, for, a, for a way of talking, so let, let's say we're going we're gonna to assume the framework of universals and have our rules for talking about, about universals doesn't mean that we metaphysically accept the doctrine of universals. So the reason, the, the reason why empiricists were afraid of talk of, of universals and properties and tropes and stuff like that, all that, all that, all that, all that, all that metaphysical talk is because they didn't think it had any kind of meaningfulness to it. There's, there's no verifiability or criterion of application in, the, in those things. So for Carnap, we have these two things could possibly be a pseudo question. Um, but in what he's saying here is that questions of these they are not a they're the the questions of external questions they are pseudo questions, but if we're talking about with them within the framework. If it's an internal question about universals, then it, it really isn't a pseudo a pseudo question. So um, you could be on empiricist and, and and talk about and talk about universals and tropes. Just have rules for within that framework. So um, the Fido Fido principle, which is by Gilbert Ryle. <coughs> He, he talks about that as a theory. Uh, Carnap says it really, really isn't a theory. Now, I think you should, you should read this article yourself to kind of get the whole thing and to understand the whole thing. Now, there is a question about the, the system of numbers in it. There's, I mean, if you are studying the philosophy of mathematics, I think I have a video somewhere where I talk about this same article just in the, con in, in the, in the context of the philosophy of math. Um, in this... In this whole thing, I'm just I'm just talking about talking about within within the context of the whole article, and within the within the context of um, <coughs> just epistemology and philosophy of science even. So, what is the final final the final final principle? So, um, let's say we have the number five, and then we have the number five. The quotes around it means this is a name. Can you see me doing this? I'm not sure. A name. So let's say I put. Um, I put. Um, I write the. I write. Um, I write the name of. Of. Well, let's say I write my name on a piece of paper. And I throw it. And I throw. And I throw. And I throw. And I throw, and I throw it on the ground. Does that mean that? I'm on the ground. No, that's a name. So the actual number five and the name five are two different things. So <clears throat> if I'm t so the you can see the little the little single quotes around here uh, on Fido. If I'm talking about Fido, the dog Fido, the whole thing is is it necessary that there has to be a corresponding actual Entity of Fido. Does there have to be an actual Fido that actually exists? If I can, if I can, if I can talk about Fido, <clears throat> does the number five have to actually exist? If I, if I can talk about the name of five, Carnap says no. Because if, if I'm, if I'm accepting a certain l l linguistic framework, doesn't mean that I'm accepting any kind of me metaphysical doctrine. Just because I'm have a framework for rules of talking about. Um, universals or tropes doesn't mean that I'm accepting a certain metaphysical metaphysical doctrine of, of universals or tropes or forms. So hopefully you can kind of understand that. If you don't, if you don't understand something, please please comment below. I'd love to discuss with you um, about, about that. Now, finally, <coughs> we have the issue of the analytic synthetic dis distinction. So. This is going to be very, very important. Come a very important article by 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 Willard Van Orman Quine called Two Dogmas of Empiricism." In that article, one of the dogmas is analytic. Is this whole thing here? This whole thing here? This analytic and synthetic distinction. Um, and the, the other dogma is re, is reductionism, but. What does it mean for a proposition to be analytic? One way is that, well, 
a synthetic one, one there there are two there are two two, two, two different ways of, of talking about these two things um and uh basically synthetic you could mean you could you could say that that means it's about the world um but i like to think i like to talk of it within the context of a of um language analytic meaning it's true in virtue of the meaning of the predicates so um a bachelor is a unmarried man that is a analytic proposition because if we break down bachelor um and figure out figure out figure out what that means and it means unmarried man and then that then that's that's analytic so we, in the in these in these analytic things we are breaking them down and figuring out what they mean and if they call and if they if they totally match up and are true in virtue of the meanings of the of the of the predicate or, or predicates then it's analytic synthetic we are putting things together in order to figure out whether they're true as to as to correspondence or coherence or whatever kind of truth with the world and that's how that and that's how that, how that works now <coughs> like I said we can have any we can have any kind of framework that we want and I have a and s 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 there because analytic and synthetic for every linguistic framework we have to have rules and part of the rules includes having established analytics for any framework. So for a language of things, we have to have um, analytic propositions that are established and from those analytic propositions we work towards figuring out our synthetics. <coughs> so we Basically, within any of these frameworks, we do science in figuring out things about the world and to grow our, our, our scientific knowledge. But to do it within the framework, we have, established, we have established analytics, and we use those analytics to, 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 to talk about things in this way, but getting knowledge of the world and doing science, but just in this linguistic fra framework and do it with this form of expression. So we can do science and epistemology and philosophy of science via any framework. There just has to be sets of rules for forms of expression and there has to be analytics that are established for it so that we can move forward from here to here and that's the way we do. That's, that, that's, the, that's the way we do um, philosophy and science, but just within a certain framework, we do it. We do it via talking about certain things in certain ways. So that's the way I would talk about it. Um, in essence, if you think that I have um, messed something up or left something out, please tell me below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have a question, or if you think I didn't explain something correctly, or you want more, want more, want, want more. Um, Explanation also come also come comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.